So of course when you're making changes like this, you're going to come across things that just don't work and we continue to hit up against it. And the, I had a team of two other parents that I really worked closely with and so when something wasn't flowing, didn't feel like it was working right, the three of us would really debate it and look at it until we felt like we'd come to a good solution. One of the ones that we're still struggling with is well-known books. So it doesn't hurt anybody. No one cares if I put historical fiction in history, if it's um, a book that nobody's ever heard about. But it becomes a problem if something like To Kill a Mockingbird, which is set in the 30s. So in our philosophy of trying to put books in the timeline so kids are exposed to books they might not normally see, we have put To Kill a Mockingbird in the 30s and we have put To Call a Watchman, the sequel, prequel, in the 50s. The problem is though, those books are really well known. So most people tend to look for those in our lit section over the other side of the library. So philosophically, is it better to have it over in the timeline? It probably is, because it exposes kids to things in the 30s they might not have read if, they, if I just gave them nonfiction. But realistically, people keep looking for literature. Again, it doesn't matter at all if it's books that nobody's ever heard about. People are happy to have them over in that section so they can browse. I keep kind of struggling with it, but I do find that the more I do this, the more I keep pulling those books out, if they're really well known, and put them back in the, the section that the kids are gonna look for first. That's one of the really nice things about the system. It's really flexible. So if you find things like this that you don't like that I've put in place, or if you've tried something different that wasn't even on the grid, you can always flex it. It's not a set system the way Dewey was that's really restrictive.